So I say we go ahead and get started. Uh, it okay. is another Friday night on Liberty Radio, ladies and gentlemen, which means open lines, which means we are talking to you tonight and finding out what is on your mind. It is your chance to be a part of Liberty Radio. Instead of just <laughs> passively listening all the time, now, now you can actually express yourself and let us know what is on your mind tonight. The stream link is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel, as always. That's how you dial into us. And even if you have technical issues, uh, we, we will be patient and help you get them sorted out as best we can, uh, as we just did right, right before we dropped into open lines tonight. It's beautiful how these things work sometimes. Hey, Rob. You know, you don't, <laughs> you don't have to, uh, this, this is going to get interesting. Because we've only done up to four people, uh, and now we have a fifth one coming in, and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle that. So uh, <laughs> we'll we'll go to to returning champion Rob. What's on your mind tonight, Rob? Oh, I was just watching that uh, old 1988 Mike Wallace interview about APAC. Um, that was uh, interesting. If anybody ever wants to know what like journalism used to be, it gotcha. Well, you know, you said that, but I have this email or this uh, letter right here, your company letterhead that says this. It's a shame we don't have anybody like that. At least pretend it's not Doctor Phil. Him. Doctor Phil. He <laughs> interviewed BB. I watched that this morning. And I've heard of softball questions, but this was like lick ball questions. Like, oh wow, you're really so great about minimizing civilian casualties. What's your secret? Like shit like that, you know? BB's like, Joe Biden needs to give me more targeting Ancient. capabilities, fancier weapons, <laughs> you know, smart bombs. Ancient Zionist like, secret, eh? Yeah, it was fucking terrible, man. It was cringe as hell. And I think Dr. Phil got this credibility for kind of speaking out about COVID a little bit in the recent last year or so. And now he's using it. He's cashing it in to sell this Israel shit, you know, as justified. Well, they need somebody to sell it. Why not a fake TV doctor? <laughs> well, there's a lot on my mind. So indeed, I need, I need somebody and you already threw up a ball there. So you guys throw up a ball and I, uh, because I have so many subjects, you know, there's so much going on. Oh yeah. Well, there's Where a hell of a start? lot going on. Yeah. That's kind of the point, you know, yeah. over overwhelm people psychologically so that, uh, they, they just check out, right. They look, they start looking for an authority figure. Because they're like, uh, I can't handle it all on my own. I need somebody else to tell me what yeah. I should be thinking so I can I can concentrate on the kids or I can concentrate on my job or whatever, yeah. right? People just don't want to be uh, bothered with figuring stuff out for themselves. Well, that's what I've been doing for the last decades. I've been, uh, my what I do every day is go to the medical info. I spent four hours on it, uh, gathering it and then categorizing it, uh, and also on the vaccines and so on. Uh, next, I started uh, actually uh, 20 years ago with uh, studying the economical system after the crash of 2007 8 because I wanted to know what's going on. Then I ended up at Max Kaiser, you know, uh, so uh, Max and Stacy. I don't know if you know those guys. Oh, yeah. I ended up. I ended up at their uh, site and uh, get to know them. And I was very <coughs> active at uh, forum.prisonplanet for years, you know, exchanging uh, information with all the other guys there. So I've been, uh, I'm still researching uh, as we speak and I follow the wars from different, uh, uh, you know, you first have to look for the sources, the good sources. And then, uh, you know, and yeah, I knew, uh, uh, you know, I warned my uh, family eight years ago that they were going to uh, spread the virus. So I was waiting for it. 
And then, then I was studying the Ebola, which was flaring up in Africa for a while. Then it petered out. So that was not the one. And I was on uh, still busy on uh, MaxKaiser.com, which doesn't exist anymore with Max and Stacey. You know, putting out economical info, which they even sometimes used in their shows. And, uh, you know, and met them personally on a, on a, on a, a Bitcoin conference. But then I started posting uh, everything on COVID because I started right from the start because I knew, oh, this is the one and I'm going to follow it now. And I actually did the same with a lot of other events. I did the same with uh, Boston bombing, with all those false flags, you know, following it uh, because I'm uh, pensioned. So I have uh, I can do everything I want, you know, and I'm searching uh, all day. And then when you do this, then you uh, so, uh, you learn a certain uh, MO, you know, how they operate. And one of the features is that they uh, often, and we saw it with 9-11, they often uh, bring out the news too early, which is a sign that it's a false flag. And they did the same mm. with, uh, and we know with 9-11, eh, with the BBC reporter reporting that uh, that the Building 7 was down while it wasn't, while it was still standing in the background. And we saw the same with the downing of MH17. You know, this plane was still smoking on the ground, and the US said, "Oh, we already know who done it." And we, we so that's an MO. That's a, that's a sign that it's a false flag because they want to bring out the news, uh, you know, as fast as possible. And another thing was that I remember with uh, MH17. That was that uh, Malaysian plane which had uh, Dutch and uh, German people in there. Uh, they down. They uh, they ordered the Ukraine guys to down it because the Netherlands and Germany didn't want to put sanctions on Russia. They didn't want to do it. But after, of course, the plane crashed. Yeah, the sanctions came through because they are the evil ones who, who downed this plane. But what they did do uh, also was funny. They brought out. This, uh, they said, "Oh, we have the the communication between the Russians who uh, launched this, uh, you know, missile from the ground." That was put on uh, on YouTube as a, as a ball, you know, flipping a ball up. But that was uh, 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 and some uh, guys who, who researched the shit. They said, "No, this is cut together from bullshit." So then they took it off, you know. So so and then you see all those signs how they operate, you know. And with 9/11, we also saw that there was a lot of good information still coming out from from real people who were actually giving a comment, you know. Oh, I heard the bombs going off. Oh, oh, yeah, but I they've thought, been, they've been saw... dutifully scrubbing all of that shit. Like, all oh, yeah. that stuff that was available in the first 10 years of the yeah. internet, good luck finding it now. Exactly. You're, you're not going to find it unless you have it in no. your personal ar archive. Forget about yeah. it. Yeah. So a nerd friend of ours, he put up a special channel now where I load up videos, which still can be found only when you know the exact title and so on, you know? So and, and 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 what you say is true. And now we have a younger generation who cannot find this information anymore. And now I have well, they to don't even know, know bring it out again. Yeah, they, they don't even know. They don't even know. Yeah, and they don't know that box. they don't know, which means they're never yeah. going to go looking for it. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And well, that's uh, yes. Yeah, I, I, I can talk for hours if you want to me, no, not a problem. But uh, yeah, so that's what I've been doing, you know, and now I'm still doing the medical research because COVID is not gone. And the funny thing is, uh, uh, if you look at, uh, uh, which I did, at the sewage water research, because we don't have the other data anymore, eh? they don't test anymore and blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. But what's, uh, what's Rockefeller Foundation telling us? Uh, that we have to die. <laughs> well, obviously, <laughs> but I mean, what, what data are they putting out? I'm not sure what they're putting out. But, well, they're the uh, ones who uh, provided the funding for the, the wastewater research. So I would imagine that they have a very strong hand in terms of what gets published and what doesn't. Okay, okay. But I'm from the Netherlands, and they have their ah. own uh, water, uh, sewage water research here. I'm not sure if it's funded by them. Oh, they're, they were funding it all over the world. This was uh, back in, like, 2021 or something they announced it. Yeah, but some interesting things did came out from that. Uh, one thing is that uh, that the COVID was already around at least in September in Italy. At least. Uh, of 2019. Oh, I'll argue yeah. it was in uh, Virginia in July. Of 2019? Yep. It was uh, in maybe even June, because I got sick with something in June. 
Yep. Could be. Could be, man. Could be. Something that you couldn't up? explain. It wasn't a cold. It wasn't a cough. It was oh, no. I could explain it. Feeling. I could definitely explain it, but it was, but uh, it was it like from? a full week of, ugh. Yeah. Wish yeah. I was dead. Yeah. Yeah, I got a, I got hit at a Tool concert in November 2019 in Philadelphia. That yep. makes sense. November, yeah. November. That's when my friend Scott said he got hit and he was sick for like a week and a half with some crazy shit yeah. he didn't recognize. That's and it, it was at that, it was at that point I would take the train into work every day, still working in the office like five days a week, and I started noticing like the train station parking lot was like very uh, empty. I'm mm -hmm. like, that's really weird. Just see it yeah. around Chris around Christmas, but not usually in November. Yeah. Wow. I had I had COVID at the end of 2019. Yeah, same uh, period that you guys talking about October, November. Yeah. But I'll never know because I'll never take no stupid fucking test. And then you wouldn't. No, know I know, I know, I know. You know why? Because I had uh, in my youth I had asthma, and uh, I was uh, allergic for uh, dust mites. And what would happen is. Uh, first, I get a cold in my nose, and it would skip to my lungs, and then my lungs would fill up with slime, and I would breathe to a straw for, for a whole night. And at That's that rough. moment, I remember at the end of 2009, I had exactly the same feeling while I'm cured from it, because they injected <clears> me with penicillin when I was uh, like a young, uh, you know, like uh, eight, nine years old. And so I never had uh, an asthma attack again for 40, uh, 45 years, because I'm 60 now. So then at that evening, I was sitting there and came from a coffee shop, you know, where people come from all over the world, which is interesting uh, on itself. There uh, you have stories, but it doesn't matter. That's not the point. The point is that then I thought, well, what the fuck am I going to get an uh, asthma attack again? So I was already prepared going to bed because I know what it is, having an asthma attack. But it didn't happen. I fell asleep and then I felt a little bit of my bones, uh, you know, aching. Uh, and then, uh, and then later, I discovered. Oh, wait a minute! That only could be the COVID because I never experienced that shit before. So that's how I know it was the COVID. Well, I'm gonna harp I on it. Had it. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna harp on it until uh, until somebody shuts me up on it. There were there were two nursing homes in Fairfax, Virginia that had patients in July of 2019 that had the crushed glass lung damage from a mysterious respiratory illness. Yeah, and they, they, were they, they, were, they were vaping. They were vaping. <laughs> that was Whatever, the vaping man. shit. Yeah, also, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was <laughs> the same thing. On you. Yeah. 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 You remember? It was the vaping. The vaping yeah, disease, yeah, they were calling yeah. it. Yeah, in Maryland and North Carolina. Strangely yeah. enough, right around Fort Detrick and Chapel Hill. Strangely yeah. enough, it's amazing how that stuff works out, you know? Yeah. What's the yeah. Uh, elevated cancer rate around Fort Detrick? Isn't it like 10 times or more the national average? Something and, like that. In like a 50 square mile, square mile area. They don't release yeah. anything in the atmosphere, though. Yeah. They're ethical scientists. No, not into the atmosphere. They, they release it into the groundwater. <laughs> yeah. Even bees. That's how you now. get away with it. Then they tell you to boil the water to activate the chemicals. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's that's uh, you have to boil the water now because of the microplastics uh, was advised. Hmm. Get rid of the microplastics. But and were uh, jewel, yeah. jewel pods being like looked into as like a cedar of COVID. I, I heard this. From uh, from a friend of ours, uh, reliable source, but yeah, jewel jewel pods could have been feeding COVID in the lungs of people. Just right around when everyone started saying that vaping might have been uh, causing this glass lung thing. So interesting. Kind of hard to prove, though. That's a little yeah, bit of a we problem. Need, yeah. We would need the jewel pods from that time. Yeah. Yeah. eBay. Well, well I mean, <laughs> to, 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 to be fair, they hadn't done, they hadn't finished, uh, you know, their exercise yet. Yeah. It just started, huh? You're right. Well, technically, they still haven't finished it. 
It's, uh, it's still ongoing. We just got the to the part, Rob, and thank you for bringing this up because I don't know if everyone was aware of this yet or not, but we just got to the part in lockstep where the public is starting to figure out that the vaccines didn't weren't actually good for them. Yeah, and yeah, and, no, and, and yeah. Noted, noted media personalities have started to speak out. Yeah, correct. The, 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 the narrative gone, yeah. has shifted. Yeah, but a lot of people don't want to talk about it anymore because they got traumatized by the lockdowns. Uh, and I know from my neighborhood here, it's very uh, they don't want to even think about it anymore. So if you if you use the name COVID or fuck said, oh you're still uh, with COVID, uh, you know uh, it's supposed to be gone. But what, what I want to finish on the switch water is here, is that actually the amount of virus particles in the water has been the biggest late late uh, 2023 you know here in the netherlands and not only here everywhere so actually and and you can see this graph over the years that actually uh the fire part so there's more fire particle in which water than ever you is know? It and you can see even from the immune systems is it is it from self-replicating spike uh proteins though or suppressed immune systems, maybe if they're feeling that. I don't know. It's just they just measure. I, how many cycles are they the... running the PCR test at? I'd say forty-four. That's no, but it's right. a fifty it's to a... fifty to be yeah. safe. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's with uh, with the tests. Yeah, uh, I mean the sewage water is a separate uh, is a separate thing. Yeah, I'm sorry. If you haven't figured out, we're pretty fucking cynical around here. <laughs> no, no, I understand. Sure, sure. You have to be. Uh, you have to be. <laughs> That's why I invited these guys. Uh, we were talking about how black pilled we were. Uh, yeah, yeah. We we had the same situation uh, a minute ago with a guy, and uh, he, I'm he not black pilled. <laughs> I the the solution is right there in front of you. It's a matter of uh, you know the same things that the anarchist community claims to love is self responsibility and self reliance. So it's getting your own food supply. Some um, making uh, partnerships with people that are close to you and yeah. making sure that you have yourself ready anytime they pull the rug out from under you. Well, yeah, it's because making sure people, your network can support your lifestyle. Most people are about two weeks oh, this away is, from this is about to get interesting. People are usually about two weeks away from killing their neighbors to steal what they have. So, yeah. Yeah. Do we? Uh, yeah. If you if you still, uh, I mean, what? Well, what, what three days worth of food in their house. Uh, oh, there was one guy saying, uh, was it yesterday? He said a year or something, or even two years or something. Yeah, most people only have three days though of right. worth of food in. Oh, house. oh, most people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. I I don't have much. Uh, you know. But I still, uh, I try to do it. I try to get more dry beans, you know, uh, the stuff you can, uh, big bag of rice and that kind of, I try to. But I don't have the Bro. means, you know, I, I'm not, uh, I, I get, uh, I'm pensioned, but I don't get a m lot of money. So it's not you like I'm grow, gonna, uh, uh, you know. You can grow potatoes in an apartment in a oh, bucket. Yeah, yeah but that's that, stupid. Do, that's uh, Sorry to say micro that. Microgreens. That, that's stupid. Because, uh, because, but uh, how many potatoes do you have? You know, for one fucking day or something. It's better than it's better than to do Still the foods. herbs. It's to better do the than herbs. eating dirt. <laughs> yeah, but but how many? I mean, it, it takes a lot of effort to grow just a few potatoes. I think that then it's better to, uh, you know, that's that's a bit weird. That's that's not. I don't find. I it, mean, uh, you could do you could do aquaponics and have fish fertilizing your. Um, your plants and yeah i mean according to people like jim gale you can grow enough food in like a quarter acre to support you for the entire year yeah we're just not you in a lot of places we're not legally allowed to do that believe it or not you you are yeah, not yeah, legally yeah. allowed to use the property that you pay money for and pay taxes on you're not allowed yeah. to use it the way yeah. you want to. You have to ask daddy government for yeah. permission to grow yeah. food on your property in a lot of places. Yeah. 
Well, they're yeah. nice enough to, to take my tax money um, and combine it with my mortgage payment. So I don't have to make a separate payment. So it's a little easier every month. So I don't, I'm not reminded the, how I'm just, I'm just renting this property. <laughs> but, but, you know, I'm in a very urban environment, you know, I don't have much space or, you know, to grow potatoes or something. I mean, in the US, it's a bit different. You have some place where you have a lot of space. I don't have it there, but 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 the idea is is anyways is good if you can do it. You know, five acres. I have to look up how how much that is. I see. This is back acres. in this is an old book, right? When, when was that? it published? Uh, five acres and independence. Bam. First published in nineteen thirty. That's what I'm talking about. Screw screw your fucking forty acres and a mule. This is published Give me five in five acres and some fucking anarchy. But in nineteen thirty-five, you. With five acres, you could grow enough food to sell and pay taxes and do all the other bullshit and, and make a living off of just five acres. This is before, like you mentioned, all these new techniques and the things that are going on. Like I've seen, I, I don't know, I've seen the guy's house. It's like this tiny little lot and he, he grows like 50,000 pounds of food every year. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah. They they make vertical towers that um, if you have like yeah. grow lights, you can grow yeah. stuff in like an apartment. Yeah. yeah. Actually, they are experimenting here uh, because the Netherlands is uh, also famous for its agricultural uh, academics, and they're actually experimenting with that shit there, you know. And they and actually that's weird that the Netherlands is I think the second uh, food exporter, but that's of course Are money wise. I are mean, they, uh, have, you, have you seen how small the Netherlands is? I mean, but what they, they do are, it they yeah. do in glass houses, eh? They do it in glass houses. They even grow kiwis and tomatoes. They don't have any taste. That's the problem a little bit with those products. They're not very tasty. Are but the you farmers, can do it, yeah. uh, are the farmers still protesting over there? Uh, yeah, that were the the dairy the dairy farmers who were protesting. Um, I'm not sure uh, if they if they still are. I I, I mean I must. That's weird, I, <laughs> because of the the work that I do is more international. So I don't sometimes even know what's going on here. But uh, okay. no, there are now protests uh, with the Palestine uh, thing going on with the uh, mili uh, with the uh, riot police and the, the you know uh, with the Hamas uh, you know Hamas thing. That's the right. Yeah, they, yeah, they but, might uh, not need to put you guys through that. Like they've got other ways to to traumatize your population in your country, so they might not need to do that there. It's it's the pattern that I've been noticing, like especially among the the quote unquote uh, Western countries, the the developed world yeah. as they like to call it. Like they've yeah. been employing similar strategies in what would otherwise be different countries. So it's it's. I think what what's happening is they're looking at everything from uh, like a, a granular level demographically to figure out what they need to do in order to get the population to move in the direction that they want them to go. And it's not always going to be the same cudgel that you use on each country. Yeah, but Europe is a CIA occupied country, you know, they uh, they completely own the politicians here. And, well, uh, well, yeah, I mean, we're basically already a one world government. It's just they haven't announced it yet. They haven't broke it to the Americans yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not going. As... No, I'm just saying it's not completely working out, you know. But maybe it is. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's the plan, you know, to get uh, Russia and China together and then. You know the dialectic you know and then the, the third world war with the because that's what they want they want to provoke a nuclear war well I they mean, got I the they got the whole banking uh system oh yeah right oh for sure yeah. behind the yeah. scenes too yeah yeah for sure i i mean i personally think that's how they bring in their one world government because they're going to need somebody to save people and someone to reassure people when all the shit that they thought they had is not there anymore and that's going to be yeah. the UN. Yeah, yeah. And Nobody's going to go for that. The social Nobody credit scores is going to go for that. Not even the well, Canadians. 
I didn't Bro, say these people are good planners. When you're starving <laughs> and the food truck comes, you'll go for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, or I can I mean they are hitting out a they're hitting from different sides. Just you jack won't go the for truck. That. I won't go for that. Most people will go for that. Yeah. And they're hitting from the uh, what I think is they're trying to create a clusterfuck with everything happening at the same time. So you have the, the, the a new pandemic, you have the wars, you have the food shortage. There already are medicine shortages in the UK. Mm -hmm. So they're cutting off supply lines, you know. Uh, so they try to hit this fr from uh, different angles at the same time, socially, culturally, you know. And, uh, and, and if you get it all together, you know, and that's, that's what they're trying to do. I was really hoping for holographic uh, aliens by now, but... Not yet. The best. Not yet. The best they can. The best. The best they could do is dig up some paper mache ones from Chile. <laughs> well, they got yeah. that, and they've got the uh, the laser hologram. Uh, oh yeah. Stuff that yeah. they've been doing. That's fucking yeah. wild, man. Absolutely yeah. wild. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if so they've they've started showing it off to the public a little bit, so yeah. that the the public is aware. That this technology exists, but when they bring it in, you'll know, Rob. It'll be their yeah. it's gonna be their last card. That's the last thing that they've got they can they can play before they have to go like just fully medieval. Yeah. That's what uh before, that's what the before that you have to all hit rock bottom. And then they give you the salvation. Like and space Jesus and all that. Right, I'm thinking they yeah. unleash the term the Terminator like robots first. We're just a couple of those dogs with uh, 50 caliber yeah. machine guns on their backs. Just one with a yeah. flamethrower, man. I feel like the eater robots are just like you know so forgotten and nobody cares about them. Nobody anymore. loves they're about like, nobody. They're loves like Wally, yeah. you know, just left in the junk heap, eating corpses. Yeah, but Bad. we learned from uh, Second World War that's an expensive way to kill people eh? with bullets. It's much too expensive. You rather do it with the virus and the, uh, and the vaccines. Oh yeah, that's, chemical uh, and, 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 and you can make money of it. Are so much better. Yeah, so you much can make more money efficient. Of it. Yeah. I, I was just looking at that article earlier. I think it was from 2022. AI comes up with forty thousand deadly like uh, chemical weapons. In six hours. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we're it's putting funny. it to good use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, I know some funny. dudes in Mexico that can do it in less time than that. Although, I mean, it just depends on what you're looking for. Yeah. I used to work. I used to work with this crazy dishwasher. He told me he could put a thimble full of something in the ocean and kill everybody. But oh, wow. everybody just thought he was a lunatic. Did well, you ever the find easiest way. No, nah, he wouldn't share a secret. The easiest way is through the drinking water. I mean, uh, here, even in this, uh, you know, so-called uh, developed uh, part of the world, there was uh, they had some problems with the drinking water, like a dead pigeon in there or something. And people died here. All people died because the drinking water was uh, polluted. You know, and that's the old-fashioned way of uh, killing people because that's been done for, you know, ages. But now we have the virus and the and the, and the, uh, gain of function research, uh, uh, which is very dangerous because lab leaks happen all the time. You know, it's not something. But that's also uh, they try to make the people <coughs> oh uh, that would never happen. It's happening all the time. And there was we're a just, discussion about. Yeah, go ahead. We're just trying to find the most efficient way to kill everybody. I mean, I think I think they're going to go. Already happening. Yeah. It's already the, happening. The, Everybody uh, submitted their genetic information to get, you know, a swab stuffed up their nose to see if they were that's right COVID, COVID positive. So now they've got like sampling on no, what no, like they, they they're, they're about to find they out how birth. positive they are. Six billion motherfuckers. They did it at birth. Uh, every uh, baby uh, they take blood uh, for the research and they keep the DNA. And now yeah. there was an article out today that uh, what there was seventy six percent of of all those uh, biological research is together with China. There was an article out, you know. So, but it's already happening now. I mean, we have to uh, see the coming. Uh, like said, the COVID is, is still uh, going on, but they they did a very smart move eh, because that was crazy. 
from one day to the other, they changed the subject from uh, COVID scare to, oh, you now have to be scared about the Russians. And it's now about Ukraine. And they did it very, and uh, they, they mastered the, 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 how you call it, the, the mind fuck, so to pivot. speak. It's called a pivot. And, and in one, because a lot of energy was built up, uh, people were locked down and a lot of people cannot handle it. Uh, they are not used to it. And a lot of energy was built up and they released this energy by going to this war. And people were wrapping themselves in blue, uh, what is it, yellow, blue flags, but not even knowing what they're doing. Yeah, and and the other thing I can uh, that's my that's my uh, from my research that the Omicron was uh, probably also from a lab, because what happened there they play always those uh, those word tricks. Eh? So they didn't call it COVID anymore; they changed it in Omicron now. Hmm. But they also and that came from left field. That came out of nowhere. If you look at the graph where this came no, from, no, it came it's, from it's the lab it. down there uh, in South Africa. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. where it came from. Yeah. There, Jesus Christ! Like, I proved I proved that uh, Thanksgiving weekend that year, which is when like they dropped three, that story. Wasn't there like three diplomats or something who had a yeah. mysterious illness? Yeah. Spread? Yes. Yeah, but listen, listen. Let me finish this little story. What they also changed is they didn't call the uh, vaccine vaccine anymore. They called it a booster. So you see two things: they changed the name of COVID in uh, omicron like it is something new and then they changed the name of of the vaccine in something new in oh it was a booster because what they knew and i asked my neighbors because at that time here in the netherlands everybody uh, had taken two vaccines and that's not the two counting as one that's like two separate vaccines and then i asked my neighbors oh are you going to take the third oh they were doubting about it so a lot of people were doubting about it. and they know this from following the media they say, oh, people are done. Then they have to come up with something. And I know they work like this because I had it happening like uh, that's a completely other subject with uh, like uh, I remember that there was a discussion about the fake moon landings around the time that the Japanese has launched a, a satellite and were scanning the moon. And you could ask questions. And then, uh, oh, did you see the Apollo shit? And they said, oh, no, the camera couldn't see it. But there was a huge discussion on the Internet uh, going on about the fake moon landings. A week later... They came with, oh, no, we have a NASA came out. Oh, no, look at here. And it's it's something I could have made in Photoshop. Huh? They said, oh, here, look, we have, a, we have a photo of the Apollo remainance on the moon. Here it is. Here it is. So they react now on uh, on what's going on, you know, and that's uh, 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 you can see that you can see the signature there. It wasn't until my eighth booster shot and my, uh, you know, third stroke that I started to catch on that maybe <laughs> yeah. that shit wasn't good for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, and, 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 and listen, what I also didn't tell the people, uh, which I knew from the beginning because I'm researching this shit, it was a non-sterilizing vaccine, which means it doesn't stop the virus. And they knew this, but they didn't tell the people. They lied about it. And uh, they changed the law in, in uh, they changed the definition of vaccine in the US, eh? they changed it. Like, because from the old uh, definition, a vaccine has to stop the virus. They knew it didn't, so they, in, instead of, uh, you know, they changed the, the, the definition of vaccine, it doesn't have to stop for virus anymore, which is completely crazy. And and the other thing is, which I don't understand is, they said to the people, oh, one vaccine, and then you can back, go back to your life. Well, then there's, oh, no, no, a second. Oh, no, no, a third. Oh, no, maybe every six months. That people don't wake up to this fact that it's in front of their eyes, you know, uh, lying to them. They have just short memories, man. It's crazy. No, you need to carry a paper card around with, um, you know, pen written on it to prove it. That, that, that was the, uh, the thing, the, the silliest thing ever. It's like our voting system. <clears throat> with all yeah. the technology available if they really wanted to do a fair vote they could do it oh yeah i mean i mean the, uh, uh, listen they wanted to bring in those machines domino machines which is proven which was even in the mainstream media at the time eh? even in the washington post and all the uh, name them they said that those machines are uh, you know they are actually uh, uh, you know uh, designed to commit voting fraud Whoa, whoa, whoa! That was to... that was that was when fake Trump won. I mean, after no, that, long before. After long before. after after that, they were the most secure systems. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, and, until and I after pre- the I election pre- year, and then they there was there was, they a, there was a law. Anymore. There were lawsuits that were well publicized that let us know yeah. that these people who even yeah. questioned yeah. the their integrity were just so way off base. Yeah, mm. yeah. And they wanted to introduce those machines here. They didn't do it. That just uh, they keep the paper, and it's just very simple. If I go to vote, I have to bring my passport. And I get, uh, you know, and then they check the passport with the letter they send me, you know, if I'm really that guy, you know, and that's, that's, uh, uh, but now they also change in the US, eh? because you have some of those uh, uh, people who really think they're doing a good thing by helping the fraud, you know, because Trump is such an evil I, guy. I had you know? no idea they were so racist in the Netherlands that that would make you carry freaking identification. How dare they? Yeah, that used in, to be in, different after the war. That used to be different here. Yeah. In in yeah. this country, you can scavenge, you can yeah. scavenge ballots from the mail from the uh, post office and just go That's dump right. them all in the box yourself without any kind yeah, of verification. Yeah, yeah man, yeah, man. And get try, people try not to get caught on camera, and, would you? And 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 then the fake liberals insult like any minority mm-hmm. by like pretending like they are too dumb to have an identification or that like you. You can do anything else in society without that ID. Like, even if you don't drive, you can't bank, you can't have a job, you can't do like any fucking thing without an ID. And yet, the yeah. whole like political yeah. like climate in America is yeah. you're a racist for making somebody try to give ID. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And I said, I said when uh, when Trump won, I said, watch next time, because the Democrats were already committing voting fraud because they thought they had it in the pocket, but they didn't count for that a lot of young people, and I spoke to some of them, were pissed off that they that they downed uh, Bernie Sanders. And then the Wicked Witch came in, and the youngsters didn't like it, and they started voting for Trump. So if, if it really was honest votes, Trump would have won with a landslide. But no, he just won. And that pissed off the, uh, the, the Democrats. And I said, well, the next time the Democrats going to win because they know that they made a mistake with the voting fraud. They had to do it more. And now oh, we and know now, it's all rigged, man. Uh, oh, we, yeah. we know yeah. that our, uh, everything that you see on the television about our politics, it's all fucking theater, dude. All this yeah. shit is predetermined yeah. in fucking yeah. back rooms by lobbyists. Yeah. They're the ones that actually write our legislation. Yeah. Like the people yeah. in this country, fucking Harvard University did a study that showed that the people of this country, 99.9% of Americans are not represented by their elected officials, period. No. No. So we know what the deal is over here. It's a fucking yeah. tax plantation. Yeah. I mean, look at look at Trump. He was uh, he was uh, saying, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna leave Afghanistan." Like it, eh? and then and then Biden came in and he followed up on 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 the same politics. And now Biden wow. is, uh, Biden wants to use uh, you know uh, tariffs now, which Trump also did on Chinese uh, EVs now. So it's exactly the same policy. Did America find a better place to grow their opium? Because I mean, Afghanistan. No. You can make fentanyl cheaper. Is, is that that's what I, it is. I was that that was going to be my follow up question? Yeah. No, that's exactly what it is. So what like, it, to to go try to find some heroin Vietnam. right now, Rob. Let me know when you do. Seriously, <laughs> I'm being dead serious. Oh, I'm sure it's all fentanyl. It. It's all fucking fentanyl now. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is brought to you by our military dictatorship that we live in. And pretend that we have freedoms. Oh, six is low again. I'll bring him up, though. Don't worry about it. Buddy, bring me yeah. up. I'll bring you up. I don't know how to get more juice out of this thing. It looks like I'm going pretty good on the uh, on the game levels. What's going on with that? Hold on one second. Maybe yeah. I'll... You just got to bear with me because I'm really fucking high right now. Oh, I understand. Uh, we need more than that. All right. Let me know when I'm coming in good. That's pretty good. All right. But anyway, I I just wanted to chime in because uh, it, I enjoy hearing people from outside of the U.S. you know, sort of talk about um, their perspectives of our system here. And just like when you all were talking about anything from like 9-11 to now, if you go back to like 1980 in that election, 
I think that uh, a large part of the, the military operations that we're seeing now and trying to draw in countries like Syria and Iran uh, were at play in that election in particular, which is why Reagan was allowed to commit treason and still win an election and get pushed through and then have a great second term as well, even though he was caught doing said treason and also may have had Alzheimer's. Kind of like the person that we have in office yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just go wrong. Just imagine yeah, all the yeah. shit they're the shit they're gonna blame on him after he dies. Well, and that's the thing, Rob, is the blame. You nailed it, man. The blame is gonna be on an individual when really, as Drizzle put it, is that people don't know how the fuck these things come about. They don't know about bills and how they're passed. That's why Trump got over, even though he passed so many stupid um, executive orders by bypassing Congress, because people just don't give a shit. They don't give a shit about that process or how it is supposed to protect us. So that that's failed us as well. And when really, when, when Trump was uh, given uh, the choice to rather shut down our economy or go with op Operation Warp Speed and all that shit that people will blame him for, and probably justifiably so, but he'll get the heat for that, not the people that offered the multiple choice questions to him that were already pre-prepared and, and part of contingency plans that have been set in place since dark winter and well before that even, probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and Trump doesn't do, uh, he, he, has, he has nothing to say in foreign policy, yeah, because foreign policy is, uh, uh, you know, where it's based on, on the Wolfowitz Doctrine. Well, the, the executive order that made the mRNA technology all of a sudden count as a vaccine was like signed on some like late night and, you know, just out of nowhere. It, it wasn't something that he thought up and wrote out himself. No, oh no, for sure. No, no, no. He, no, he, he. he I mean, he didn't even know that it was coming, and then yeah, they, and then he was instructed. He was, he, was, he was instructed. Like Master Damas, that guy. Let's just add that to his uh, mystique. I mean, oh, let's he's be honest. The future now. Yeah, with his with his five D chess moves and his. Uh, Unanimous. <laughs> well, apparently, he's out there saying that Jews that voted for Biden should be ashamed of themselves, and I'm like, what oh, he did say that. <laughs> what the fuck would have changed? He was also attacking Kennedy on vaccines, saying that he's really not against them, like he says he is. <laughs> Dude, I'm digging the whole brain worm thing. Like, I think we I can we can develop like a whole product line just based off of that that headline. I, I heard about the brain worm. Is it, vanity today, is it a vanity campaign or what is it? I mean, I wait till the know. wellness company gets a hold of that <laughs> well, information because they can market uh, ivermectin. Oh, no shit, it is dude. a worm killer from that. So I'm waiting for the connect. Fuck app. yeah. Set up like a little kiosk at all the festivals and stuff throughout the summer. <laughs> Just fucking doling out brain worm kits, man. 25 bucks a pop. The, the wellness the thing company about the brain is worm. sell a lot of their kits. The thing about the brain worm is, uh, um, is he normalizing brain damaged presidential candidates? Is he helping Biden by pulling away Trump voters and normalizing? That's an interesting angle. That's a really well, interesting angle. You, I, well, you just the first thing in my head when yeah, I heard well, brain because he's not he's not even the president, right? Because we have John Fetterman. Uh, who who has is recorded like it's it's science they have science behind it and they're telling you he has brain damage right and yeah. he was elected after the public knew that he had brain damage yeah so the precedent's already set and i mean of course there's always the whole thing with reagan right like we'll never actually know whether or not he had alzheimer's while he was in the office ha <laughs> ha nudge nudge wink wink right yeah. um and it'll probably be the same thing with biden too but they're gonna use that as well well they they, they tried to pretend like nancy uh was running the show that, that's how the uh, democrats of the day tried to portray it like he was out of it so nancy was making all his decisions yeah like, yeah, I think um, the cat was out of the bag. That dude is just a figurehead. 
but I don't trust I don't trust uh, Kennedy uh, because I heard I haven't checked it, but the other guy who did research he said Kennedy had a weird uh, warp on the vaccines. He said, yeah, we have to do more research and track it more, you know. So he is not, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe he changed his position now, but... Uh, oh, that was his Mia Culpa, yeah, right? That, that, that that was that's him that's his political it. position, because yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the vaccines have, like, if you look into it at all, you can see that the studies are done by companies paid by the vaccine company to give them the results that they want. The FDA, oh, yeah. FDA's bought off, yeah. so it's a, you know, foregone conclusion yeah. they're going to get approval. And then you got yeah. the 1986 child protection act that uh makes all their uh, liability go away if it's on the childhood schedule so it's yeah if, if, if everybody knew that they may have a little different opinion of the studies that have been done <laughs> yeah but there, yeah. there have there have not been uh, much studies done because it was an, uh, it was uh pushed through to the emergency act uh, because normally it takes 10 20 years to uh test the vaccine you know and uh um, the, the Childhood Vaccine Safety Act. It's like the opposite of what it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like every bill that they have some fancy name for. Just it's like Orwellian. It's been like that my whole life. I think. It seems. I think that everybody who is allowed there at the top, if it's Kennedy, if it's Trump, if it's, it doesn't matter, Biden, if they are allowed up there, you can say you cannot trust them. That's how I look up on it now. Because the, I remember some uh, guys who were asked to uh, go for the presidency, and uh, uh, some of those guys were threatened. Uh, uh, was it? Uh, I forgot his name. It was not. Uh, and well, one of the guys, uh, the good guy, so to speak, and he said, "No, I was threatened with my family. I'm not gonna, not gonna challenge. You know, uh, uh, risk my Ross. family to be president." Ross Perot. So, uh, yeah, could about? be, could be, or yeah, could be that one. Yeah. Could be Ross Perot, yeah. Yeah, he was uh, running with a strong chance of winning in the yeah. the uh, polls that they were doing at the time, and uh, he all of a sudden dropped out of the yeah. race, and then uh, yeah. he tried to he tried to jump back in a little bit later, and that's what was his excuse for jumping out was that they had threatened his family, which yeah, I don't, I don't doubt, but at the same time, like they just made him out to be a loon. Well, Kennedy's not even a, like Could a real be. candidate. Like he he's not even on the ballot in most states. I think that's, still to this that's, point. That's why I wonder: is it a vanity campaign? Because oh, he could no. have taken. He's, he's part of the plan, brother. Like I think that yeah. he's there yeah. as part of the pacification of the public. Yeah, Trump said yeah, he's some he's sort of Kennedy. foil. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. think yeah, he's yeah. going to be um, on the ballot in the swing states enough to um, pull that vote? If he's needed. Yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, because like yeah. just enacting a, a third party candidate so that another can sort of sneak by without much, yeah. you know, hurrah, you know, there's there's not going to be much, you know, uh, opposition to to Trump at all. Like and, and with uh, with Biden in his state and his current uh, approval levels and everything, like would anyone in the country buy it again? Would they buy it again that Biden could somehow win Yo, can in a you popularity mute contest? What's up now? I get it. I'll smoke Kush. Yeah, we have some background noise from Kush. Oh. And you were uh, on the I low side. Uh oh. I was just thinking of that Spinal Tap song today. This but 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 yeah. let's be honest. It doesn't matter who's president anymore. They they are just front puppets, you know. Well, yes, yeah, but they, 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 they really need to do something to placate the American uh, public because yeah. uh, I think there's a large majority of people who are kind of like stuck. You know, the people who used to believe in this dumb system, when they see a 81-year-old dude who's been losing his shit for the last four years and they're going to try to you know prop him up there one more fucking go round, And another guy who's just a, you know, World yeah. Wrestling Federation bad guy, Hall of Famer, who never has ever done anything serious. He's just like the bombastic, you know, get a response out of people. Yeah. Um, piss people off kind of guy. I think he's a narcissist. I think Trump is a narcissist. Oh. I mean, that's probably. I think most people in politics are narcissists. 
Yeah. Having actually done a study of the psychological complex, I think that's exactly what politics was created for as yeah. a magnet for that personality yeah. type. Yeah. Oh, because they're malleable. Because all you have to do is play right. into their... They're game. easily leveraged. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And they are social climbers. They're so proud that they yes. have this position. That's why you know, they're that, easily Oh, I'm leveraged. the president. You know, I'm now somebody, you know. And yeah, the I love it. The uh, uh, narcissist loves it. Yeah, Everybody che cheering. They love it, you know. That feeds them. They feed on it. All the uh, the Trumpers have been talking about. Oh, this is Obama's third term. He's running things behind the scenes. <laughs> like, oh, there's was, the other one. Yeah, the other he was one, just yeah. a, uh, yeah, a Obama creation. wasn't running shit. He was, he was a creation of the imagination of the American people from some yeah. like fucking focus yeah. group or something. Yeah. Obama I heard that Obama was thing. sniffing coke and watching basketball games. You know, in the White House. So. Uh, but the funny thing is, with Obama, he came from left field. Eh? Nobody knew uh, knew him. And then they wanted to pull out the, the next minority president. That would be uh, a woman, and that would be Hillary Clinton. That's how they wanted to uh, play it at the time. Never which, happened. Uh, which, didn't, which didn't happen. It, it'll it never just, happen. It just goes to show you that the Clintons are part of that group, but they're not in charge of shit. They're yeah. still no. You know, I no, think no. I think you could literally run Hillary Clinton against anybody, doesn't matter who it is, and she will lose. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah, she's yeah. that hated. I exactly. think that's why I think that's why they put Obama up there because the people who back yeah. that shit exactly they see was... they've known this. They have known yeah. this since the mid 2000s that you're not the American people are not going to vote for her. They're just not yeah, going to do it. Yeah, but that's not completely true because uh, Hillary came after Obama, not before. They, yeah, they but brought uh, they brought her up. After, she was so so in the running in the pool of, of candidates in 2008. Yeah. And they, the and, and, Bernie, and they put and they put Bernie Sanders aside for Hillary Clinton, you know, within the party. And that pissed a lot of uh, young voters off. That's uh, when uh, when Trump came in. He's just another useful idiot for all those people. Um, if anybody wants to be reminded, he was like, let he he saw, you know, the court case that showed that the Democratic Party said they would put whoever they want in place. And. It's all, you know, it's not really an open club like everybody thought. Well, I, gotta, after all. I gotta thank Bernie no, Sanders for dropping the fucking ball because I think that that opened a lot of people in my life, like people that I've met doing this, like a, a lot of people's minds because they they found out that the state was going to fail them. And that's the, yeah. the, the greatest gift that Bernie could have given anybody if he was, especially yeah. if he wasn't taking anything from somebody else and giving it away. Yeah. <laughs> that's some bitch. That's what happened to you. Well, that's where, um, isn't that where Tim Pool and his fake ass came from? From the whole Bernie Sanders and then Occupy Wall Street? Occupy, yeah. yeah. Well, definitely Occupy. I don't know as much about Bernie being was, like a I, Bernie bro as much. but I thought he was a Bernie bro. I thought I heard him say that, but I may have been mistaken. I mean, well, the Occupy Wall Street is not a bad idea. I know he was definitely an Occupy Wall Street guy. Who somehow turned that into some middle of the road, um, mammy type media that gets paid a lot of money to get up there and suck Israel's dick? Yeah, but he has he, he was he he was critical of America coming in and establishing a beachhead. He was really mm. emphatic about it being a beachhead. He even looked up what a beachhead meant. <laughs> Well, he was yeah. at the White House in 2017 with, uh, who else was there? James O'Keefe, I believe. Um, some other alt-media luminaries. I can't even remember who they were at this point. Probably like Dave Rubin and shit. Probably. Shapiro, Probably, yeah. Some big meeting that. That, that Trump had with the, you know, the, the rising internet media. Yeah. Well, yeah, because they started coming after people for making memes. So that was around the time of the um, what was this? What was his face like um, the the picture from uh, Ricky Vaughn? Uh, oh yeah, there yeah, we yeah. Go. 
Yeah, it was like a play off the pitcher from uh, the movies, major the major league movies. Yeah, um, which are classics. That's like I I've heard his real name, and I will only remember him as Ricky Vaughn. So oh yeah, it's great yeah. marketing, good shit. Yeah, but nonetheless, I mean, that's when people started getting banned off of some of the platforms. So really, like it was it was a great sort of uh, gathering in a sense of like introducing people into like the new alternative media and kind of like by just being in Trump's presence, kind of like just knighted by him in a sense when it, when it comes to like just validation of like, yeah, this is the new media. This is our stuff. Just like Tavistock yeah. told people that the Beatles were their music. Hmm. You know, just, it, it only takes like the, the, the association itself. Like was all it really took to accept to accept an invitation like that. Yeah. You know, just put put you in that place of you know now now you're aligned, and and if you look at the the, the history of guests and the positions, I mean, and especially like his absolute freak out. I'm talking about Tim Pool, like his his freak out uh, to his co-host Ian Crossland about bringing up the vaccine stuff, like bringing up anything Operation Warp Speed around Tim now. Like just if, if so, he wait, wasn't, hold up, hold up, rewind. Yeah. yeah. What? So Tim will like freak out. W U T question mark. What? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've seen multiple clips of it of Tim freaking out because people have brought up that Trump should be held responsible for Operation Warp Speed. Is he and, trying to argue that he shouldn't? Oh, no, he's trying to argue that that's old news. Oh, that's like, old news. Yeah, that's just something. So like, we don't have don't to worry about, about old news because it's yeah. old news. Yeah, he just minimizes okay. it and All tries right. to move on. He wants right. to talk I about the I see exactly that are what now. kind of some bitch Tim Pool is. Yes, I know he, exactly yeah, what that fucker is now. And if he wasn't like there to pacify people or to keep people sort of in a box, Bullseye is back on that fucking midget. Yeah, gatekeeper. I'll see yeah. if I can find that clip and send it to you, man. That'll gatekeeper. Hey, him and out. him and Luke have decided they want to make money, so they're like Trumpies now, aren't they? Uh, well, I guess you know, Luke can catch some crosshairs too. I know that's probably going to ruffle some right. feathers in the Grand Theft World community, but whatever. We're there adults, no people. Cows. We all make choices. Yeah, yeah. If I, you take I, the money, or, or if you're doing it for the money, if you're doing the the shucking and jiving, then you deserve a little bit of a call out. I'm just saying, like, there has to be some purity. I know that the, it's, it can spiral out of control of everybody. Be like, well, you, you have this many followers or you, you, you get these types of sponsorships or whatever, like the, all that shit. But like, it, it's, it's, I'm about the positions. Like, I don't care who's paying them or anything else. Like, if you just judge it from the, his positions alone, like, is he not thinking through logically or, or applying any sort of like ethics or morals? Like, no, no, he's, no. he's just figuring out creative ways to position things to a market. He's trying yeah. to sell you, not trying yeah. to like be your friend or not trying to uh, educate you. So that, that, that's just my position on it. That's how he, I feel. About he, it now. he wants to play the middle ground where he doesn't quite, you know, wholeheartedly endorse something, but he'll try to point out hypocrisy and, yeah. uh, like our friend Steve Poikin would say, safe, dangerous. You play safe, dangerous. You know, yeah. where it's just like, we're going to talk about the new hot that's, button topic that's a tonight. good way to term it. Yeah, well, Steve comes up Ooh, with great Ooh, look shit. at me. I'm rock and roll. I'm edgy. Yeah. So punk rock there. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, what smells worse, uh, Tim Pool's beanie or Bernie's house? I imagine Bernie living in a house that smells like like old soup. Yeah, but smells like. See, that's um, a difficult man. call, though, right? Because you know Bernie's got the money to hire like a cleaner to come in at least like once a week, you know, tidy up, freshen up, just make sure that it doesn't smell like fucking urine all the time, right? And this is a But he's also but he's but he's, he's also <laughs> probably cheap, right? Yes. Yes, because of his ethnicity and his upbringing and the programming that got put onto him from his experience going through this world. So he probably doesn't have that cleaning service that comes in once a week and freshens up. I mean, and I like don't he... know if Tim actually knows how to do laundry. 
because I've never witnessed him doing it with my own eyes. Bernie looks like he's never even tried to run a comb through his hair. So um, usually people who won't bother to comb their hair aren't really great on the other hygiene items. I'm going to have to go coin flip. <laughs> yeah. But isn't it, isn't it a bit of a waste of time to talk about these uh, minor players? Because they are front puppets and we are... We are playing their game now. We're talking about people who don't even matter. I mean, right. Maybe but I think they, they also ridicule yes, is what they deserve. Exactly. They deserve ridicule. So if we have to take a couple of minutes of our airtime in order to provide okay, okay, that service yeah. for the public, yeah, that's, that's what enough. we do yeah. here at Liberty yeah. Radio. Yeah. Absolutely. Fair enough. Yeah. We always take our shots. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> No, I'm just saying, maybe it's time to look uh, who's actually making, uh, I mean, that's why I'm interested in who's making the, the Biden policy, who, who is involved in there, you know, the think, of course, foreign policy is a Wolfie's doctrine. So there's the think tank, yeah, the Council of Foreign Relations. So I know that, I know that, but I don't know about uh, uh, domestic policies, uh, who's doing that. Do you guys it's know? Those, who, it's one of those things, if we all turn our attention away from it's just not going to bother us anymore because uh, they're going to do what they're going to do regardless mm -hmm. of, what, of what we want to do. And if we, you know, make parallel systems that uh, eventually get them to come confront us, I guess we're going to get, you know, <laughs> nuclear missiles dropped on us. But until then, I'm going to yeah. go on living. Fuck them. I honestly, I don't know right off the top of my head who's directing uh, domestic policy for the current regime. But if I yeah. had to take a guess, I would say that it's probably J.P. Morgan. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that. Yeah, that's on. That's on. Yeah, you have the three pillars. Eh? You have uh, big pharma, you have Wall Street, and you have the military industrial yeah. complex. So these these are the and three JPM players. Runs Wall Street. Wall yeah, Street please. is dependent upon the American yeah. economy for yeah. continued yeah. returns. So, yeah, boom, there yeah you go. remember, remember that Diamond was in uh, be before Congress and he was wearing this ring, you know, and he was saying, "No, I'm part of you, you know, I'm yeah. part of the government." That's what he was saying there. He's part of the government. And then BlackRock, and then BlackRock, and then uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, uh, also part of this uh, idea. Yeah, who was the uh, the guy who was trying? Who, who was getting questioned about money policy? And he's supposed to be <laughs> someone in charge of it, and didn't gave like some silly explanation how he could just keep printing more money. I've already forgotten. Uh, Bernanke? No, it wasn't Bernanke. He would he would have actually been able to bullshit his way out of this question. Uh, who else he asked him like a really basic question. He like stumbled and it was like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, that happened uh, a few days ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. Yeah, like maybe a week ago. Yeah, yeah, he had to explain uh, printing money. Yeah, well, yeah, he had yeah. to explain why the government borrows money when they have the power to print their own money. Yeah, he had to work his way out of that one and he couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And unfortunately it got caught on tape and, and broadcast all over the yeah. world. Yeah. yeah. Probably woke up a couple more people along the way would be my guess. Yeah. Because that's a very important issue, which is not much talked about now because of other things, wars and COVID. But that's how I started off with Max Kaiser. At that time we had uh, Guillabo, you know, uh, uh, the insurrection against the bankster occupation because the whole system with the money printing is so harmful and so directly impacting everybody but nobody talks about it you know about inflation and if you ask people on the street where do you think uh, inflation is coming from you get those answers oh no it's about uh, it's putin so they're gonna blame this uh, whole that's why they want to expand the wars then they can blame it on the wars, you know, if this whole system comes down. They need the cover-up. The banks need the cover-up. That's why they're constantly provoking the shit, you know, and 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 instead of seeking peace, are actually doing the opposite. That's the you main mean, reason. Because you mean to tell me all our problems haven't been caused by Putin? Oh, my God, this is, this is irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's that's what uh, they make people believe here. Because I ask a woman in the supermarket, what do you think uh, uh, inflation comes from? 
So, so, and that's and that's something I uh, uh, well, I'm on the Discord with with the group, and I, I bring this inflation issue up all the time because it's very important because it's it that's actually hurting everybody, everybody, all, and nobody all, knows where it's coming from. All money in circulation is based off of debt. So when you print more money and add more yeah. money to the supply, you therefore yeah. devalue it. That's yeah, the because simplest. you're inflating the supply. Yeah, you're inflating yep. the supply. That's the simplest explanation. And, and that's yes. why most people are ignorant of it and why <laughs> a lot of people don't yeah. talk about it, especially in media and, and yeah. people that are critical of that. Yeah. Because Mark Geiser, fear, Mark Geiser said fraud is the business model eh, of uh, Wall Street. Fraud is the business model. Well, and he the, knows he worked on Wall Street. So, uh, you know, he knows. Well, the mainstream I mean, and, and what they're the doing stocks. is they're printing up money and they're buying up the treasury paper to keep the rates artificially low. Yes. Gold prices are not real. And actually, uh, the central banks are not shy about it. They say, no, one of our tasks is to keep gold prices down, you know, to, 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 uh, that, that our fiat money, fiat money looks good in comparison with gold. And uh, so, so, so this whole, it's all fake now. Eh? It's uh, the whole that's world. How, it's all fake. That's how, are fake. That's how yeah. Like yeah. Alan Greenspan's been doing that shit since the the nineties. Like so, it's it's been yeah, East, yeah, cooked, yeah, 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 completely yeah. cooked. And, and yeah. drizzle yeah. just to let you know, uh, I dropped that link of the Tim Pool's uh, freak out bullshit um, in both your telly and oh, nice. uh, the GTW. Nice. Um, I'm gonna watch that if before it, I go if, to bed. Yeah, there you if go. If it wasn't for all the narco uh, dollars flowing in from Afghanistan uh, heroin yeah. trade in 2008 during that financial collapse. That's the only thing that kept the whole system from crashing totally back then is because they had those assets that they had to like throw out into, yeah. you know, tangible assets and yeah. they propped up the economy with that shit. That's Skull and Bones, huh? Skull and Bones is always about opium. Mm. And that's for centuries. Yep. That's how, that's how the queen in England... Opium and heroin, the, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, fucking makes the world go round. Remember this clip with uh, Geraldo Rivero on uh, that he was uh, trying to explain why the why the army was not. They were not only guarding the opium fields; they were supplying them with everything they needed to uh, harvest the opium. It was even going farther than that. It makes and then sense you had those uh, army guys standing around with a dull face because they felt ashamed, I guess. That yeah yeah we uh, because otherwise those poor people will have no income if we don't provide them everything to grow the opium. Gerardo Rivero and that little clip is uh, also almost scrapped from the net, but I still uh, loaded it up. Well, you know, before was... before the U.S. moved in in uh, 2001, Afghanistan had 62 different crops internally, orchards, herding uh -huh. operations going on. Not a and... single one of them was poppies. Yeah, after the, after the invasion and the Taliban got uh, pushed back, all of a sudden they were the first uh, narco state with a. Oh, they were back in business, yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were back in a big like way. Yeah, five thousand. Yeah, five thousand tons of opium That's every right. uh, month coming That's out right. of there. Fucking like that. open up that golden triangle, bitch. Yeah. Yeah, oh, and that's been going on uh, in Vietnam also. Eh? So the same story oh, yeah. there. Yeah, for centuries that's been going and they on. And they use the bodies. They use the bodies to ship it. You know, they uh, mm -hmm. they use the coffins to uh, the dead. Do they use to, anything, to ship, yeah. anything. Yeah, they Doesn't it matter in, uh... what it is. They yeah, they'll ship it in dead soldiers' yeah. coffins from fucking wherever the battle zone is, yeah. back yeah. home for for the kids in South Central. You're goddamn they right. They will. They were taking so the memory. Do you remember about a month after we got out of Afghanistan? Suddenly we were looking at Vietnam, like we had to go back to fix something, like going back into that region militarily. Do you remember? No, I don't. I don't, I don't but I mean, I, you've got North Korea there, so that's like always a constant what if. There, yeah. there was something like that's one of their I mean, one of their little things the news, that they like, have to play with. They started to make that motion towards that, but they didn't. I know we abandoned no, billion dollars balloon. worth of military equipment and just left it there for the Taliban to take. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, but that's the whole military. Uh, there's there's uh, was an article out that 15 trillion was not accounted for at the Pentagon. And remember Rumsfeld the day before 9-11 uh, coming out with the 2.3 uh, billion uh, not accounted for. So that and, yeah. and 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 we know that you know when they are also when they're fighting in uh, in Iraq, that when when something broke down like a completely new truck, they wouldn't they wouldn't repair it. They would just burn it, and then and then order a new one. Yes, because you need and, reasons and we to know burn they're money. Overcharging. Uh, it's also the the military complex is completely corrupted. You know. Yeah, you oh, need yeah, reasons what to I, burn. I, I want to yeah, ask you guys because I you know many people haven't i haven't got the answer yet that i remember under obama there was a a, a lot of generals were sacked eh? remember that that a lot of generals were sacked all of a sudden yeah. out of the blue for well that was all part of fast and furious right like we we found out about the the fucking illegal gun running that they had been doing and we're like oh shit now we got to fire a bunch of people I'm not sure. They didn't give a reason. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember they gave, they gave that reason for it. I just I remember a whole bunch of them, 20 action. or uh, no, 15, 20 generals. Uh, I don't know what's happening there, but it's uh, like, uh, you know, cleaning up uh, before a, Rep a Republican comes in or something. We well, like got to get judges. the right people with the right frame of mind in. You yeah. know, just got to get yeah. the, the brainwashed, you know, maybe Mormon or whatever other type of yeah. cult. You know, getting them in the right we'll position. Yeah, yes. when you tell them to just, if you told them to press a fucking button to vaporize a child, yeah. they're not even going to blink. They're going to be like, no. yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Milgram world, man. Well, speaking of programming, yeah. too, like all this talk about the opium wars and stuff like that. Gee, coming from a generation where a lot of our popular music was about pimps and people that were drug dealers. It yeah, makes sense that right. that came up in the same era as the Skull and Bones, notably famous for loving the opium trade. So no yeah. wonder that shit kind of clicked at the same time, huh? Well, they, yeah. they, they got it started in the 80s, right? They, they got like all the component pieces put together. They started working the, the enterprise, figuring out what the operational flow was going to be and all of that shit. So that by the time, because again, remember, the, Ollie this, North. yeah, well, not, not just Ollie North, but you've got Poppy himself, HW, right? Yep. Former director of the CIA. He came yep. up through the, the fucking East India Company network, right? Yeah, the banking like system. most people don't know that today we call the East India Company Kissinger Associates. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then they'll rename it to something else like 30 years down the road after everyone's forgotten about that rat yeah. fuck. Kind of like the Golden Brzezinski Institute. Institute. <laughs> but right. some, some, some say it goes even back in the opium wars in the 19th century eh, when China was flooded with uh, opium. That's what I'm talking and, about. And, and that now, and that now, China these are the same we... families. They're running yeah. the same yeah. fucking game. They've been doing yeah. it for hundreds of years, and nobody yeah. seems to want to fucking pay attention to that. And they are not. They not to come on television. You know, they are. Uh, they China. Are on television China has that... the great eight families. If you. Um, oh yeah, they also have something going on there. Yeah, yeah, they also have something going on there. But they say right, now yeah, that, 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 really the that the fentanyl is a, is a revenge action on the on that opium uh, shipped into China. That's what uh, some people say. Don't know if it's true, but that's what. Uh, Got to switch what suppliers. You know, like that's just a, they're moving. It's a shell game with with drugs. Like they're always going to come out with some new shit or, or find like a way to hook people on something. They're they're trying it right now with social media. Like it's just another another form of enslavement whenever it comes oh, to like, yeah. your mental processes yeah. your dopamine levels all yeah. of it so i mean we're we're here to kind of you can like, control the input you can control the output yes it's yeah. that simple i mean yeah, when you only give people a, a few certain perspectives that are allowed to be had um socially yeah. then people fall right in line with that shit they don't oh, want yeah. to be the outcast and, and forced to pick a That's side true. in it like all it, you, like you're not going to do your duty by going to vote for one of these terrible choices like you're not going <laughs> to 
you're not going to pick the lesser of two evil, evils, which still means you're, we're going to be in a perpetual war no matter what the fuck, that they're yeah. just going to burn money over and over again in places like Afghanistan, which I'm glad you brought that up because I think that was one of the Washington Post's, well, you know, this was happening for 20 years and we had no curiosity in it. So here you go. Um, and then along with that too, it was them giving money to all kinds of people like for contracts and, and yeah. other things or just paying people the fuck off. But the people yeah. that the, here's the thing about it. Those people that they gave the money to the majority of them had no use for American dollars because it bought them nothing. The only thing that they could do with that at a certain point, because whomever ruled over there was the mullahs, the mullahs had control over those areas. So then the people yeah. would just give over this money, like $50,000 for like a couple of goats and the rights to some land. Like they didn't really have much of a system set up, you know, where they had a real yeah. economy going over there with the American dollars. So, of yeah. course, the mullahs benefited from that, kind of like the, all of the oligarchs benefited from the yeah. fall of the Soviet wow. Union. And then all of a sudden you just have like a, an oligarchy forming. <laughs> yeah. In no, Afghanistan. No, it was, it was tailor made for. for the oligarchy. Yes. Like it was literally like they set that whole progression of events up so that it would be yeah. as quick and efficient as possible in the transfer. Like how could they not read that, that one? You know what I mean? It's the underlying it's the underlying system for every scam government that they throw in front of us as an option. It's um doesn't matter like if you know the, the whole idea of uh marxism is like workers rights but it isn't a authoritarian central control that takes all the production and fucks all the workers like yeah. It, yeah. it's it's funny it's funny how like all those different things are distorted but oh it ends up like that there's always some narcissistic sociopath who wants to have control yeah. over people that ruins everything for everybody <laughs> And, and remember that no army ever won in Afghanistan. So it's the perfect place for the industrial complex to go in there. Because they knew nobody they ever, Nobody ever won in Vietnam because they weren't meant to. It was just feed in the military-industrial yeah, exactly. complex. And yeah. it was uh, per perpetuating the opium trade. That's right. And the, fu and the funny thing was that there was an article out in uh, British media about that they advised soldiers to carry uh, pieces of gold with them because then they could negotiate with the tribal members. And the funny thing is, uh, I spoke to some guys who were there, that, uh, you know, the Americans and NATO was also there, there even were Dutch soldiers there, that they had the bases, you know, in the valley while the enemy, you know, the, the guys were in, in, in the mountains. And they were shooting. I heard one story from a Danish guy that he was calling his mom and then uh, he was in in the phone booth, which was uh, you know with glo with uh, with uh, I call it uh, bulletproof shit, and it was hit by the Taliban all the time while he was calling his mother. Those bullets were coming in, tuk tuk, and and they had to pay off the Taliban, yeah, the local Taliban they had to pay off the Taliban to get their goodies into the base. I mean, how crazy is that? So the one you were supposed to fight, you have to pay to get your goodies into the bases. I mean, that's fucked up. So it was completely a uh, complete fake war, of course. You know, if you hear these stories. I got a. You said you're in the uh, Netherlands, Barry right? Gunn. Yeah. I got a question for you. Because uh, I saw it. Well, let me. I got two questions for you. And the second question is, is predicated on the first. Is the Netherlands part of the EU? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because uh, I saw today that the EU has announced their uh, framework for digital ID, which they yeah. expect all member states to be in compliance with this framework by yeah. 2026. Yeah. That's uh, 18 months from now, roughly, give or take. They're, they're yeah. calling it real ID in but the United States. We already States have a... I already 2020, have a 2025. I already so, have a chip in my passport. You know, in my European passport, there's already a chip. They're right. doing it with our, they're doing with our they're, driver's license. They're, they're going to be able to tie this to your bank account, right? Yeah. Just, just like all the crazy conspiracy, ugh, conspiracy theorists have been saying for the last yeah. 10 years, they're going to be able to tie it to your bank account. If you get out of line and they find out about it, they're going to be able to shut you off. They're going to be able to 
eventually program your money. They're working yeah. on those protocols and transfer systems right now. The IMF yeah. and, and the Bank of International Settlements announced those last week. Yeah. 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 It's about the money, folks. Like and and they want to the connect money. it and they want to connect it with your Foxan passport. Exactly. All the things. Right. I they the want the, the full vaccine. technocratic control yeah. grid, the yeah. linchpin of which is the digital ID. So yeah. Are the people in the Netherlands just going to roll over and take it? Probably. Wow. Probably. Six because was trying to get something in, but you guys. I, uh, I, I it's, pay it's now as, as a way of resistance. I pay with cash. I only pay with cash. And I, when I, uh, I try to you know, persuade other people to do it. And, and it also helps the little, uh, the little business guy. Because then he can get some money for himself, you know, if you pay him cash. Oh, yeah. Because he can't, if you pay it for the digital system, he cannot do it. Right. So, so, but cash, a lot of you people can still here, do off ledger stuff. Yeah. You get, you don't pay all your taxes, of course. Eh? If you do, uh, that's, that's somehow, uh, you know, some everybody of these does their own thing. Yeah. Buy. That's how some of these, actually, we have a fish guy here. And he, he even had to sign up. Eh? You can also pay with cash. And I do it because he's happy with it because then he can survive, you know, with all the uh, costs he has. All the people around here have a 3.5% surcharge if you use a card. Cash is king. Oh, that's good. That's good. But here not. Here a lot of people are paying with uh, cash. And uh, no, no. They, I mean, the Dutch media uh, is taking... I mean, that's the other funny thing. The whole anti-Trump thing with the Democrats is, uh, I mean, the Netherlands is sort of an other state of the U.S. in a way. And they, they're totally anti-Trump here. Everybody's anti-Trump here. And, of course, anti-Putin. And they'll buy all the, the major. And the problem is... We're anti-politics. The, the people still trust the media here. They still think they get informed by the media here, which is completely not true. Uh, that's the they, same thing here. That's the same Don't thing here, yeah. Yeah, don't feel bad. It's everywhere, I'm sure. Um, you know, there's trusted channels that people have been tuning into their whole life. <laughs> and and you in the United States, you still got some, because it's a big country, you still got alternative media. We hardly got ever. We got some. You know what we get? Can, if we watch much. the news, we get to find out what the Kardashians are up to or oh, you yeah. know, the, the popular rapper yeah. or basketball or football. What is player. George Clooney outraged about today? Ex yeah. 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 KFC has a new menu item. <laughs> but still, still, there is some hope because we know from statistics, for instance, that still, I think, around 20, 25% in Germany, probably the same here, if I, uh, because I ask on the street, didn't take the function. But they are all divided. So you have, uh, and I have a lot of contact with these people because I'm on the subject uh, eh, since uh, 2020. You have people within families, uh, which one part took the Foxen and the other part didn't take the Foxen. So you get you get a lot of uh, problems going on. Somebody's within got back feet again. Kush yeah, is on this... mic again. Hey, Kush, man. There's not. Nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you guys can hear it, but it's not on the broadcast. No, I no. am low, but I listen All very right. carefully, and I still can. Uh, After hear question, what let me uh, let me see yeah. if I can do something about that. I'll give you some. So, audio. so what you said that you put him up didn't work. Uh, no, no, no. Mind. It's you. What you guys are hearing is uh, it's in the background. It's not going out on broadcast. Uh, and, I understand and it's working. annoying, but let me see what I can do. I'll hit the gain on my end to see if it helps because I I'm I think I'm maxed and, out. And on you were only on How's one ear, so, so, so you're sort of mono on one ear. That's wild. At my end, I don't yeah, know. But I'm, I'm, as... gonna, I'm gonna crank the gain here. So give me a second. Uh -oh. You're only on How's my left ear. How that's... how am I doing now? Yeah, that's a bit better. You're, yeah, that's better. You're a bit louder. Yeah. Okay. How about now? That's oh, that's... much better. Yeah. Well, because I have him cranked way up. Yeah, that's much better. He was still low. But am I blowing everyone's eardrums out? Nah. No, not at all. No. Okay. You're good. I'm going to turn it You're down a notch the from there, one. just in case. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll play it safe. 
But yeah, I appreciate people looking out and helping out with the audio. That's this is this setup is a little different than what I'm used to. But Dude, um, you think you think what you're looking at is different. Oh, <laughs> Trust yeah. me, I got all of you. Yeah, I don't know how this yeah. Um but anywho, uh on on the topic that we were on with Afghanistan though, um the the perfect way to burn a bunch of money is to literally do what they did for 20 years. And that's what they oh, intend yeah. on continuing oh, yeah. to do with oh, Ukraine. Yeah. You know, since we, you know, yeah. I heard Putin being brought up there. And yeah. then also with what's going on in Israel, Gaza yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, and also the, the, the frightening thing is to me is that most people are misunderstanding what's going on over in the Middle East uh, because of our media. So overseas, like, I'm not sure, like you mentioned that there's not a hell of a lot of alternative or good alternative media or that it gets taken down easily because you have, yeah. you know, shit, you know, protections in your laws against, you know, or, or for free speech. It's a very small country also. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, you don't have that big of a pool to work with in the first place. So, but when, when it comes down to it though, like, uh, you know, I don't know how it's, it's viewed over there. But I mean, for, for over here, for the people that I interact with on a daily basis in my personal life, like these people don't know shit about what's going on over there. And they don't understand no. that this, this no. is no, a, a real estate play for a lot of people in a sense, because like when you get rid of the rightful heirs to a certain land, like they don't exist anymore, um, it's pretty easy to make claim of it. And if, especially if it's a uh, limited land, like you mentioned, like uh, that you live in a, a, a and I'm, and I'm sorry if I forget your name, because uh, I don't know how to read the names on this shit yet. Um, but uh, main thing. Okay. Yes. So you mentioned or that you main. live in like a populous area, like you live in a city, you know, urban type. Area. Yes. It's like Los Angeles, uh, the Netherlands here, the part I live in the West coast is like Los Angeles. That's how busy it is. Yeah, imagine if you had like a like a San Jose or something like that that was available to expand Los Angeles into. Like imagine the amount of real estate capital that 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 would exist there if they wanted to expand a city of that nature. Yeah. wider. And and just you look around and it just seems like everybody else seems to own everything in these certain places. Oh, except for these people that we are that we've been occupying since what 1948. Yeah. So, well, before uh, that, even. Oh yeah, I would liken it to like, what if we just started bombing the fuck out of Puerto Rico because we didn't like some people that were there? <laughs> like, I never understood why uh, the U.S. Uh, didn't invade Mexico because that's the most easy thing yeah. to do, you know. Start bulldozing some houses and putting up some fences and building your own shit. I mean, they're they're basically a, a puppet of the United States anyway. Why why yeah, would yeah. why would they invade Mexico? Sounds I mean, like first of all, you're you're going to interrupt the wrong. cartels' activity, and that's yeah. that's not going to be good for anybody because that's that means you're going to be cutting into profits. And mm -mm, nope, can't yeah. do that, son. Not when they're getting yeah. the Mexican milk for free. Biden was talking go. about targeting uh, cartel members, yeah, but yeah. That probably that's a one never uh, happen. one day story. It will never, never happen. happen. No. In the '90s, they were talking about the uh, North American Union, where they were going to make Canada, America. And They're still doing now. that. They are actually do. They are actively doing that right now. Well, Nat, Nat, NAFTA was you know, the fucking Amlo was talking about it like a year ago. He's like, I met with Joe Biden and Trudeau, and we signed this contract and. Yeah. We're all going to be one big, happy, multicultural family. Yeah. I can't wait. He's to supposed to fight Justin. the drug war. I can't More wait to welcome Justin Trudeau to the family with a fucking sack beating of oranges. Well, the, the surveillance alone of that uh, transcontinental, and not trans in that way, but uh, transcontinental like highway that would run from Mexico to Canada. The amount of surveillance needed there, and I say needed in quotations, because like if you're if you're using this as a government figure to try and get more spending to benefit the banks, of course, uh, that you would just say, well, hey, 
because we're going from like this place to this place, it's going to require a lot of surveillance. We need to stop things. We need to weigh things. We need to check things. They could be hauling drugs. They could be hauling illegal immigrants from God knows where. So we have to manage this entire highway of transportation, distribution, and basically how major businesses could operate. So therefore, any competing business outside of the worked and rigged stock market system will not continue to exist because we will make it so unfucking believable hard <laughs> to do business yeah. and to ship things and move things this way that only the people that are like we are in their pocket will yeah. operate. And that's how you control and manipulate a market where you can always yeah. call the winners and losers. That's called a monopoly. Yeah. Hell yeah. And then and then you can you break crony you break, capitalism. Crony break capitalism. That, you break that whole thing by um open sourcing an EMP weapon that you go and knock down all their surveillance equipment and make them have to keep replacing it. And they Rob, can never quit. Rob, we don't can, even have to we don't even have to put that much effort into it. The sun will take care of it for us. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I like to have contingency security. No, all the all the transportation. It, it, didn't they try and pass the the fucking healthcare law over like the the commerce department, like something about interstate commerce? Yeah, that that's how the uh, they presented it to the Supreme Court. The interstate <laughs> commerce clause is how the Affordable Care Act somehow became constitutional. Yeah, we're the commerce. <laughs> we're we're what they're. They're shuffling around there. Yeah. Most yeah. people, um, unless you're like just happen to be on vacation and suffer some kind of accident or medical emergency, chances are you're not going across states to get your health care. I would hope not. That would seem to be incredibly inefficient. Well, yeah. if you lived in like a state like Nevada, you would hate All that All right, shit. honey, I'll be back in a couple of days. I got to go for a checkup. Well, they're well, encouraged to do it if it's for an abortion. <laughs> you know, if you have to travel uh, yeah, a couple yeah, states yeah, over to whack a baby. You have a point there, Six. They they have incentivized the ladies to, to take a road trip for uh, for that event now. Yeah, well, you want to pay for that Just make shit. a big party out of it. Get your bag of weed, you know, some beers. Apparently, some Justice Roberts. Hey, Liberty Radio, you know. Poor out abortion road trips, ladies. Tims. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, Justice Roberts' smooth um, nomination um, was there for a reason, because he was the dissenting opinion, wasn't he? I don't remember. I honestly have sure. not paid attention to it. I think he was the majority opinion, rather. He was the one who uh, went across party lines, so to speak. Yeah, and I thought it was Roberts that sold out. Yeah. It the, was. The conservative base, yep. Yep. Oh, the judicial supremacy. That fucking fallacy. A bunch of cunts in robes get to sit down and tell you what's what, like with your body, with what you're going to pay for to exist because what you of interstate can say. commerce. What you can say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the clowns that they've put in recently are just, they should scare the fuck out of anybody who actually believes in this broken system. Look at what they did when they they passed this bullshit. Well, I don't know if it's it's not fully through the Senate yet, so who knows? But like the the anti-Semitism uh, laws that they're trying to pass through the Department of Education. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not compatible with the First Amendment. The government shouldn't nope. be regulating speech of any kind, especially in education. Well, we'll find out, won't we? If if because if the Senate people, passes it too, you know you know Joe's going to sign it. Which means it, can, then it's going to end up in the courts through lawsuits. Eventually, it'll make its way to the Supreme Court. I don't expect this to take long either. I expect it to no, happen before no, the no. selection. No, no, no. By you the think, way, uh, I mean they're long, owned. They're owned. So how long uh, till they no. kill off Clarence Thomas? <laughs> no. Oh, they're going to replace his ass before this next bullshit. Uh, they might get him with the pricker. I mean, I've They're heard so some nasty sexual rumors about the Clarence Thomas, too, but that always sort of 
Well, there was a pubic around these people. There was a pubic hair on the coke, if I remember back from the Senate <laughs> confirmation. I'm, oh, I'm instead, old, of the, instead of the coke on the pubic hair, you know, yeah, yeah. That that was the thing. That was like racy. Back well, they when didn't really. Did no, really. actually, they did specify, didn't they? They said it was it it's, was a can of Coca Cola, not it was a can of Coca Cola of Coke. And and he he quipped to the woman that it looked like a pubic hair. And that was what they were talking about during his nomination. Yeah, but that's also funny from from the perspective here from Europe is uh, is this whole CIA operation? If they uh, want to get somebody down, it's always something with sex, eh? oh, which is yes, a bit laughable. Ops? The CIA is just an extension of all the other intelligence agencies that they've infiltrated that run the show for the yeah. oligarchs. Who yeah, really the run CIA is the legacy bullshit. of the Galen Network. Like that's every everything that that the Third Reich had going on as far yeah. as like secret police and all that shit. We call yeah. that the CIA today. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The leftovers. They just fucking the... branched out into every country yeah. all across the yeah. world over the course of the 20th century, and yeah. uh, right. That's why I said Walmart we're already or... in the one world government. They just haven't announced it yet. Was it Reiner Fallmark or one of those Nazi generals who went and trained Mossad after um, that Israel became the UN appointed state? I don't remember the name, but uh, no, the Reiner Fulmick was the uh, the dude on the COVID council in Europe who embezzled uh, money. Reiner something. And Real you have sure. the Bush, you have the Bush Nazi connection, huh? With Prescott oh, yeah. Bush, you were, yeah. Oh yeah. Nazi banker, yeah. Nazi banker. Who yep. would have thunk? Who would have thunk that? So who, uh, who along with who the acted? CIA who acted? Director. What what I want to know is who acted on his behalf to get the banking assets of Union Banking unseized, and for him not to get you know the gallows for treason. Reinhard yeah, Galen. Good question. Good question, yeah. Because yeah. business is business, Rob. That's why. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he probably bought it over the yeah. If it were up to a government that was governed by the people, I mean, yeah, they, they would have gotten like fed like face first into a wood chipper, maybe. Who knows? If they had well, this even back then. At the at the same time that fascism was um taking root in Germany and Italy, it was also taking root in England and America. Yeah. And, they were, they were all formulating plots to take over their governments with a fascist regime. So, yeah, yeah that's but, how you but, sell but, people but, with modern they, appointments and, uh, you know, conveniences of a better form of communism. Like, you can yeah, give that, them a better form yeah, of but communism at that time with it was all not the luxuries normal, of the eh? modern world. At that time, it was quite normal because you it, had fascism yeah. in Germany. In Portugal, you even had a dictatorship mm -hmm. until 1973 eh? with Salazar. Yeah, there was fascism and you in had Spain Italy, as well. Spain, yeah. Italy, so it was all over Europe. It's, so uh, and the elite loved this. Of they that they loved Hitler, you know. That's why also they didn't. The, that's why they didn't lose. They just relocated. He yeah. was he was he was the man of the year eh? uh, on Times Magazine. Uh, Hitler, you know. Yeah. And they uh, they loved this stuff because he had complete control. That's what they. Uh, that's what. Oh, this guy really has oh. it going. That's what we want here, you know. And yeah, now it's was, happening. He was it's working. Sort of he was working with um, Prescott Bush and a bunch of other American industrialists in the Marshall Plan yeah. and using all yeah. that money that was supposed to go to like reparations, so called, to the other European countries was going towards the war machine that they were building. Well, that's what corporatism is, Rob. It, it's the industrialists working with the government. Yeah, that's fascism. That's, that's fascism, happening in yeah. the US. So you have fascism in the United States now. Yeah. You have fascism in the United States now. Oh, fuck yeah, we do. It's, we call it yeah. big tech. Yeah. Yeah, that's, well, why, Smed, that's why I refer to it. Big pharma, big uh, military. And Smedley are, Butler yeah. tried to expose it in America back at that time. And, yeah, somehow, and what did they do, like, Rob? They fucking wiped that whole thing from cool. history. Yeah. yeah. Well, Smedley yeah. Butler was the uh, one who called on uh, Prescott Butch. That's how that's how it came about. That's how it came uh, into light. 
because they want they planned a, a coup eh, in the United States at the time. Yeah, they wanted to 19, take over the government like uh, they did. It was in 1935 you know? or 1937. And they wanted to delete it. Yeah, yeah, they wanted him because he had the support of the World War One veterans, and they were like 500,000 yeah. strong. Yeah, that's a hell of a what if, like graphic novel to make. What if Smedley oh, they have a took movie, the job? They have a movie about it eh? with uh, America in the, a series, a series. Very dark. I didn't like it that much, but I watched a little bit. But that America was completely fascistic, but they did it a bit in the, you know, in the German style, you know. But uh, yeah, but, but actually it's here, but it's, 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 it's more, you know. I guess they more, weren't uh, as, uh, hidden. I guess they weren't as sophisticated in their assassination attempts back in those days, or they just had that much power that they didn't even need to kill him. I, I don't, I don't understand how he lived after collecting the information. He was probably too high profile of a figure while yeah. he was alive yeah. to really yeah. be able to do much to him other than just like make his life really fucking difficult. Right. He was he was in a bankster family. He married into a bankster family. He was a uh, Prescott Bush. He was a, a tire salesman, but he married a girl into the banking family. So it probably got protected maybe uh, within the family. Could be within the banking uh, families there something. Good luck got trying to to uh, do some research on him because it's it's not as easy as you might think it should be. No, there was a guy. There was a guy. Uh, there's a clip of a guy who did research in the in the documents. You know, he pulled yeah. up the documents about Prescott. He can, uh, there's a clip on it. Uh, uh, you can uh, watch on. Uh, it's still on YouTube. I loaded also up on the alternative side with the guy I, who did research on that. I personally look forward to when it's illegal in America to even talk about that whole fucking scheme with him. <laughs> oh, they if won't have to make it connected. illegal. Most people and don't know about part. it. Will never no, most know people about don't it. know. They don't know. No. Alex Jones brought it up. He had the interview with the guy. Alex Jones brought it up. There's so many books that uh, have so much information that people will never know. And without that yeah. information about history, you never really understand what's happening in the present. Europe seems obsessed with erasing its history. Like it, it, I've met young German people, and just like the mention. Or even like even cracking like somewhat racial jokes around them. Oh, dude, will, those like, people call them. Those that's people the, have been put through so much. Yeah, like, yeah. That's the that's the defeated. Like you. Yeah, they're broken. Your nose, those people your are nose, broken. Your nose rubbed in shit that you didn't have any fucking thing to do with your whole life. That's the whole like premise of this whole white fucking guilt bullshit that they try to throw on everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you should feel bad because rich people in the past that you had no like relation. And even if you were related, you didn't benefit from it. <laughs> we're all did, you know, did you know that uh, Homeland Security uh, hired uh, Marcus Wolf? Who was the head of the Stasi in uh, East Germany, and they hired the uh, ex KGB guy, mm. and uh, and and you can see it because you have a website in the US which called uh, which is called uh, if you see something say something. That's pure <laughs> Stasi. That's pure from Stasi <laughs> that label. Sure is. That's right. That's, uh, you know, ratting out your your fellow. Uh, no agenda man. show That's has a jingle Stasi. about it. If you yeah, yeah there's a nice jingle about it. If you see say something, say something. something. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. have a website still up. It's still up. And that's Stasi playbook. They they hired Homeland Security, uh, Marcus Wolf. Well, Americans uh, are uh, dumb. Was also, a, was also a Jew, by the way. I don't know if it has any connection to that, but he also a Jew. But uh, but he was the head, and they hired him to uh, to ask how, uh, you know, how to handle the, to handle the people in the U.S. Oh, I've seen... Um like little electric signs that they put up on the highways, like temporary signs to having uh, messages similar to that. You know? Yeah. And it works eh? because I talked to a lady in the U S and she got read it out for uh, just on lies that she uh, wasn't uh, treating her children right or something. And she got invaded eh, uh, by CPS. child protection service. Dude, it is ridiculously yeah. easy to yeah. sick the government on somebody in this country if they yeah. have children. It is yeah. ridiculously easy. Like, if you're just a yeah. vengeful motherfucker and yeah. you want to get back at your ex because you think she's a cunt, 
You can report yeah. her to CPS and they have to investigate. Yeah. And it's a yeah. fucking racket. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it fuck yeah, it is, too. dude. Yeah. And the problem, what the lady says is, well, I couldn't even get angry because they say, oh, you see, you see, she's angry. So she's probably not treating her children right. You cannot ke- even get angry. So you have to keep your cool. That's what she told me, you know, to, to get it. Uh, that, that she was ratted out by a neighbor for bullshit, this bullshit, man. It's crazy. And people don't understand that they destroy themselves. They, they destroy, they're destroying their own community, motherfuckers. Well, with that's this, with the... this uh, nanny shit, uh, you know, uh, cowardly uh, bullshit, and then anonymously calling, you know. It's... Well, it, well it's... It, it could be in good nature. That's the thing. That's the insidious and fucking sick part about it is usually what triggers all the all the means and ways in which the state like takes control over a person and their assets and rather guardianship or custody cases. Um, it it comes down to a bunch of subjective decisions made by some special yeah. fuck in a robe, of course, that has all yeah. sorts of connections. But really, the, the thing that tips it all off, though, is one complaint. Once it's registered in the system, it's like a red flag goes up. And then yeah. they follow that red flag, kind of like they do with these school shooters and shit, too. It's really yeah. fucked up. But it's just like once you, you, you flag the system, once you call the police, once you make a record of yeah. some something, then it just it gives them it's like granting Dracula the ability to come in your home. Like, come on in, yeah. sir. Yeah. <laughs> and that happened in the Second World War here in the Netherlands, eh, when we were occupied. And that happened in East uh, East uh, Europe also, that people read each other out because there are je- a lot of the times be- just because they are jealous. Because they have a lot of jealous people around there. And, uh, you know, I talked to people in uh, Romania just after the fall of Ceausescu. I was there. Uh, but I talked to my father, who lived, uh, he doesn't live anymore, but he lived the Second World War here in the Netherlands. Eh? So he told me some stories there, how, how it is. You cannot trust anybody, people ratting each other out. And that's and that's the sad thing. And uh, because I was just talking uh, earlier about uh, how it was in, in the village I grew up here, in the, I grew up in a small village here with 900 people. And you wouldn't call the police. You wouldn't call the police. You would arrange it on the street. So in the old neighborhoods, people would arrange it themselves. And I talked to a guy, a Kush from Mexico. He said, we did the same thing. You don't call the police. You know. And I was in Turkey. And uh, and I was walking on the market with my girlfriend. It was on holiday there. And then the guy, he, he uh, with the car, he, well, he was not driving fast. He was driving slow. But he hit me, you know, purposely from the back in my knee. So I made a derbenic stance and fell back and, uh, and put my elbow in, in his front hood. So he became angry. He came out of the car. What happened is people around me, two, two guys, you know, just being around, grabbed me. Other two guys grabbed the guy and said, well, fuck off. We saw what's happening. You are wrong. Fuck off. And they grabbed me that I wouldn't attack the guy. And then it was solved. You know? So that made me so happy that uh, that made me feel very safe that people actually on the street are engaged in, uh, you know, in uh, in uh, settling things. They don't call the police there. They don't want to have the corrupt police around there. Oh, shit. That, Our that people pull out their phones America. and just watch men beat the shit out of women on the subway or something or yeah. worse. There or was worse. some um, some incident like probably like eight months ago in Brooklyn, New York where some guy got stabbed in front of his girlfriend and she oh, stood shit. there and she stood there and watched and then refused to identify the guy because he was, um, you know, a minority and she didn't Fuck want God. like, it's just, they've poisoned like the, the uh, American mentality with these crazy fucking ideas. And, I, uh, I hope she flies an extra special, stupid flag outside of her house. Because I love the people with all the flags. They need they need special stupid flags. The ones the with the placards like in their yard that tell you what their house is all about. This house believes in science, right. although we don't know shit about it, so we just believe people in authority that tell us that something is science. And we don't know that 50, 50% of peer-reviewed studies can't be repeated on a repeat experiment. Oh, oh that system has been corrupted. The whole, whole medical uh, uh, accepting... Uh, what they do now, if they don't like the research, they just keep it uh, peer, not peer reviewed. So you see researchers now, a research, 
And they were even having discussing not publishing the not peer-reviewed studies. Mm -hmm. And peer-reviewed itself is an appeal to authority in a sense, too. Like, also, yeah. also, but I wanted to take it a step further. Mm. So because now you still can uh, re uh, read the non-peer-reviewed studies because it's a study. And if you're uh, capable of uh, reading this shit, you can see if it's any worth any. But it's complete. That system also has been corrupted with people uh, who decide which 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 uh, 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 medical papers get reviewed or not. Yeah. The arbiter is: Can you repeat the experiment with the methodology that they have proposed in their study? And and if you can't, it's non-repeatable and it's a bullshit study. And that's just. I that's mean, because no it's way the scientific that. method, Rob, and the scientific <laughs> method is fucking racist. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't much room for money in that. What you were saying, that bullshit. When no. does the chance? I mean, I don't know what they're teaching kids in school these days, but I mean, in basic science classes, that's what they taught me in high school many, many years ago, that you have your hypothesis. And if you can prove your hypothesis through, you know, different methods with controls yeah. in place, then yeah. someone should be able to come behind you and repeat exactly what it is that you did. Otherwise, your study is flawed. Well, that, that was how we yeah. defined science in the before times, Rob. We have a different definition for it now. You need, do I need to send you a revised dic dictionary so you can keep up with everybody else? I think I need a newsletter or some kind of Something. pamphlet to, All right. to re educate me, me on this. Give me your email you know, behind the scenes. I'll get you hooked up. It's all right. It's all right, buddy. Nine out of ten doctors smoke camels. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a, yeah. a quick solution for some of this uh, science fuckery is uh, perhaps that we, I know plenty of podcasts, for instance, that practice a value for value model. Mm -hmm. uh, what of that when it comes to scientific studies? Like, can you do value for value funded science? Is that something that could be uh, a I'm, I'm in the group. I'm in a group like that. I'm in the oh, group fuck. with the neurologist and with some other doctors, not many, but some. And a bunch of lunatics and a bunch of guys like me who do research. All right, I like it. I like and it. Uh, he uh, he got funding now, and he's uh, he's setting up a lab now uh, and doing research on the on the prion uh, prion uh, side. The prion's of, disease. Of this, uh, the prion yeah. disease. Yeah. Wow, man. That's and he's busy with it. And uh, what? And I'm, what do I'm you? On the, yeah, go ahead. What do you, what what do you guys think? Like, how many different experiments do you think that they pushed out in their different batches of their different Moderna, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Johnson and Johnson? Like, how many different experiments do you think they were doing at one time? Because there's no doubt that a lot of people received saline, and a lot of people had different reactions, totally different, and some people have started having long term where other people just had like something that's just kind of like not that terrible but they're, yeah, they're there's, it. there's a range of after effect unfortunately i know a few people yeah it, 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 yeah I, I know i know a lady who got uh, diabetes from the fox and and uh and i can go on and on about this but um uh, but but yeah the problem is there's also a big genetic factor going on not everybody every uh, literally everybody is the same you know yeah. and uh, that goes to say with covid uh, you know uh, some people get very sick uh, some people get uh, not sick at all you know and uh, but there was there was a uh, there was a article out about that they had numbered three different ones with one with saline one with uh, the real deal and one with uh, something else well, this some runs with the the bad batches theory too that there were certain that, batches. Yeah, but that, which... uh, I haven't seen much more about that. Uh, what I know from uh, Johnson Johnson and AstraZeneca, there was a paper out, I think two well, years ago. If you're going to run an experiment, you want to have a control group, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I told my mother. If they ask about it, you can say I'm part of the experiment, and then you shut up. And if they ask further, then you can always say, Yeah, I'm part of the control group. You know, it's a little trick there, but uh, but anyways, uh, I, we know with uh, Johnson and Johnson and AstraZeneca, there was research out by a German researcher who said, well, it's not working well. 
uh, because what is happening is this this uh, vaccine goes into the cell nucleus, which it is supposed to do. It is supposed to stay around in the plasma, and then it creates zombie uh, spikes, and those zombie spikes create blood clots. And now, for the first, uh, I think it was today or yesterday that AstraZeneca and that uh, shit was pulled back. Yeah. Well, but if you if you have some if you have some genetic code that's creating um, proteins, I mean, what's the stretch from creating folding proteins and prion disease? I mean, not very much. Well, the spike is a folded protein. That's the idea. That's the idea. Well, uh, wasn't the appeal we... of the AstraZeneca that it was more traditional in a sense that it was well, that uh, was no, the same the way they sold slice. the Johnson and Johnson. No, right, no. that it was supposed to be more like the attenuated vaccines that they have used traditionally. My, no, which my is thing, why it supposedly only took one, which my, again, my, never made any fucking sense. Why is like that one's only one, but like the the newer, better stuff, you have to get two of them. Well, and it probably didn't work too well because I mean, imagine trying to take somebody else's Lego that doesn't work, work with your Lego system that was made because it was a recombinant bat vaccine. And then you try and splice that with your traditional vaccine. Like, it's just, it's weird. It's weird. My, uh. my fa my favorite part was that, um, some people who are being mandated to do it, they may have gotten the Johnson and Johnson one because of the one shot and done. And then they took that off the market and the mandate was still in effect the next year. So the companies just said, well, you can get one of the other um, mRNA ones to make it as yeah, your booster. Yeah. Like, cause we that need was, a one shot was, and done video of people having reactions. reactions. Yeah, That's it was so, so scientific. Mm -hmm. I, I remember all the studies they released on it, <laughs> all zero of them. Yeah, and uh, and and that research was years ago. So even if this research from uh, which is even published, so was not uh, not in the alternative media. It's, yeah, that's officially recognized researcher. They didn't from even bother to you know to address it. They just go on. No, you have to take the fox in. You know. From what I heard from U.S. public officials, the reason that God gave me two arms was to take the flu shot in one and the COVID vaccine in the other. I mean, I no, hate no, to they have to mix up whatever. Them. At the same time, Rob. I hate I hate to think those trusted people would lie to me for some ulterior motive. You guys Just are like crazy. Travis Kelsey, Rob, at the same time. I was worried I was going to run into conspiracy theories on this fucking show. <laughs> well, gentlemen, well, we've got uh, less than five minutes left hour. until the top of the hour. Uh, so if you've got anything you need to get off of your chest, now is the time to do it. I just want to say that um, I'm going to be showing after this week's Saturday Night Anarchy T. Snyder's movie, Hold Me. Um, and nice. I, I encourage people to, if, if you're tuning into the Grand Theft World Liberty Radio uh, two hours from the vault that night, uh, please stick around and, and, and hang out with Drizzle, of course. But I will be uh, showing that replay on the TMP channel. Uh, on Rumble, so you can check that out anytime that you want to. Uh, I strongly rec recommend checking out this film. Um, I previewed it this this week and took notes on it because I was just really into it. Um, and the fact that this film was probably thought of and in production nearly ten years ago, if not you beyond the that, title again? Uh, it's called Hold Me, uh, oh, okay. H O L D M E, Hold Me. But um, I'll make sure yeah, I put the link in the replay. Yeah, I, I would strongly recommend people checking out this film. You can watch it for free on YouTube, but I want to show it on on TMP on Rumble so more eyes can see it and more people can support Tease because he made this film value for value and people can donate to pay their ticket for the film. So if people want to do that, I'm going to put his uh, links all over the description and on a little banner that's going to run during the movie. So. But um, yeah, I just wanted to get that out there for people to check that out. And what's it about? Um, well, it's about um, euthanasia and um, the kind of like what's happening in Canada right now, for instance, uh, which happens to be where Tease is from. And uh, the, the movie uh, is about a young woman who takes a job to hold patients while they're being euthanized. 
voluntarily euthanized. Yeah. And oh, it's wow. a, a really powerful, really powerful film. I, I strongly that recommend it. That sounds powerful. It is. Yeah. And She's ahead of its time, hard. disgustingly ahead of its time, Drizzle. Like, yeah, I think you'll really well, appreciate yeah. that part of it. If he made it 10 years ago, holy shit. Yeah. Tisa, Nearly 10 years is he ago. a time traveler? Is his I, real name John Teeter? That was one of my <laughs> questions is like, what's it like to live out of time? Because like there are artists and people that simply were working in a different time than us. And I think that you showing Bill Cooper proves that too. Oh yeah. But, there's, but there's and some things of... are timeless, right? Indeed. Life. But there's a lot of euthanasia going on every day in the medical system. Because what happens a lot is that if people get a lot of pain, they get a little bit of morphine, they get a little bit more of morphine, and then they die uh, actually from the painkillers, you know? And um, so you have, different, you, some? you have different forms of euthanasia, of course. And that's, so that's an, that's an alternative form. Because they had this whole discussion here in the Netherlands also. And then at one time, those doctors were uh, ordered to report it, you know. But of course, it's it's not reported anymore because that's what happens, you know. That's. But, but what you are saying voluntarily is, is completely different. 